Hello folks, this is Ayat Naja from InspireToRise.com and today we are going to talk about the Samsung Galaxy M31. So guys, let's first start with the unboxing for the same. This is the official box for the Samsung Galaxy M31. Inside you find this smartphone, it comes with a nice packaging and everything. And the back has a very nice glossy finish. Inside you get the SIM tray ejector tool, quick start guide for this one, warranty card. You also get a 15 watt charger on the inside along with the USB type C cable. And now let's talk about the build and design for the smartphone. It comes with a glass front polycarbonate back and side frame. The camera bump at the back is very distinctive Samsung style. There's a fingerprint sensor at the back and the back is polycarbonate, gets scratches very easily. This is the Samsung branding at the back. On the right hand side, there's the power button and the volume docker. It has a dewdrop style notch and overall I felt that the building aesthetic of this device was pretty good. On the left hand side you get the SIM tray slot for this one. It's a dual 4G smartphone, supports micro SD card slot. At the bottom there's the 3.5mm jack, USB-C port along with a microphone and the speaker grill. If you talk about the display, it comes with a 6.4 inch Full HD Plus Super AMOLED display. Pretty good, uh, visible in daylight also. So it's one of those better displays out there in this price range and I found that content consumption was also pretty good on this smartphone. If you talk about the specifications, it comes with the Exynos 9611 chipset on the inside, 128GB storage and you get 6GB of RAM inside. It's a UFS 2.1 storage and overall performance etc is good. Every sensor is present on the smartphone. If we talk about the Antutu benchmark, it scored around 2 lakh on the Antutu benchmark. The read-write score for the UFS 2.1 storage was also pretty good. And if we talk about long-term gaming, the gaming performance is good. You can play something like Call of Duty on high settings with high frame rates. And if you are an avid gamer, you would find that the smartphone plays good. But there is an issue with most of the Samsung phones which creeps up here as well. The issue is that these phones with the Exynos chipsets do heat up after long duration of gaming. We could play PUBG on extreme settings as well on smooth and extreme or high and ultra settings and as you can see it was easily going up to 40 degrees on some points and that's something which is an issue for a lot of people and if you are going to play for really long hours then maybe this will creep up. It comes with limited support for Cam 2 API so Gcam bye bye Tata. This smartphone has a fast face unlock and the fingerprint sensor positioning at the back makes it convenient to unlock the smartphone easily. So that's not a big issue here. It comes with a 64 MP primary camera sensor with a f1.8 aperture which is the major upgrade compared to the Samsung Galaxy M30s. It also has an ultra wide sensor 8 megapixel, a 5 megapixel macro camera and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. It's capable of shooting up to 4K 30fps videos and the front camera on this one is a 32 megapixel one with the f2.0 aperture. The traditional Samsung modes etc are all present here. I found that the image quality was good. In some points I felt there was a little bit of over sharpening and the colors were good pleasing to the eye. Could have been a little better but still it was good considering the price range and sometimes in the selfie camera samples I felt the detail was pretty good this is because of the fact that it has a 32MP sensor the videos taken from the back came out a little bit shaky and I felt that the stabilization could have been better it takes some time to shift focus from different objects far away objects to closer objects the video from the front camera appeared good 1080p video but still the problem of uneven stabilization could be seen here as well if I talk about the user interface, it comes with Samsung's One UI 2 and Samsung has started showing some ads in the One UI which is really bad but still I feel that it's one of the more polished UI out there. There are some pre-bundled bloatware applications installed which you can uninstall so it's not that much of an issue. The back gets smudges really easily and you will find yourself cleaning the smartphone all the time. It comes with a 6000 mAh battery which is the biggest draw for the smartphone. The battery life is terrific but the charging is just too slow. You only get up to 40% in one hour with the 15 watt charger. So if that was better, things could have been even better for the smartphone. It retails for a price of 15,999 rupees for the 64 GB, 6 GB variant and 16999 for the 6 GB, 128 GB variant. At such a price, it does compete against a lot of better smartphones in this price segment. But if you are somebody who's a fan of AMOLED displays, big batteries, 
and the samsung style of doing things then you will certainly like the smartphone so guys this was it for this video in case you like this one don't forget to smash the thumbs up button do subscribe to inspire to rise i hope you all are safe during this extended lockdown period and guys please take care of sanitization and all of the other stuff around and no matter what you do stay inspired to rise